Hi, I'm Cindy Scott. And I'm Joy Ciaracia Levy. We are proud to bring you the first two scenes from our play, The Review. This play is a project we've been working on for many months during the pandemic. Joy and I have been friends for many years. We met at ABC News, where coincidentally, we both worked in production on the show 2020. Over the years, we've enjoyed countless trips to the theater and visits to museums to enjoy all forms of art. This play is about an art critic and an artist and how one review changes the course of their lives. We're grateful to be part of the Irvington Theater Arts Incubator Series. So please enjoy the review. Scene one, the stage is divided into two scenes. One half is artist Brad Blaze's Greenwich Village Loft. The loft is part of artist studio, video studio, and living space. The other side of the stage is Colin Barry's Fifth Avenue apartment. The apartment is elegant and exquisitely designed with original works of art. As the scene begins, we see Brad Blaze, an artist. He is adjusting the bow tie on his tuxedo while inspecting himself in a full length mirror. His wife, Holly Danford, enters. Brad admires how beautiful Holly looks, but it is she who is taken aback by the sight of him. Ooh, look at you. When was the last time you actually let your lumberjack chic meet starving artist look take a day off? Turn around. Slowly, so I can admire you. Brad reluctantly turns around for her review, fumbling with his tie. Holly smiles and affectionately touches Brad's shoulder. She helps Brad with his tie. Very nice. You certainly clean up well. Here, let me do that. All that's missing now is your wrist corsage and we'd be on our way to the senior prom. Well, take a good look, because at midnight the spell is broken and this penguin suit goes right back to where it came from. Why does this have to be black tie? Because it is all a part of the show. It sets a mood. Besides, I think the glamour's half the fun, don't you? Holly, you know I couldn't care less about the glamour. It's strictly business for me to Holly walks to a camera on a tripod. She removes the camera and walks over to Brad. Just a little B-roll, okay? Must you, Holly? Save it until we get to the gallery. She looks him up and down, admiring his new look. Come on, Brad. I want to get this shot of you looking so... Ridiculous? Or should I say uh, terrified? Oh, that's good. That's good. Tell me what is going through your mind. Just talk to me. Forget the camera. Tell me how you feel. Put that thing away. Come on, Brad. One question before we head over to the gallery. Only one. I promise. Do I have a choice? No. I would like you to describe what's going through your mind as you get ready for what could be the biggest night of your career. What kind of question is that? Holly motioned Brad's to talk with sign language since your camera is rolling. Okay. You want to know? Can you imagine your work dissected and analyzed by a bunch of high society idiots? Tonight, I'll be paraded. My work on trial. What do you think I'm dreading tonight? There, that's my answer. Now, can you please put the camera away? Brad, come on, give me something to work with here. That's not the kind of response I'm looking for and you know it. I want you to open up to me. Be vulnerable. When you began painting, did you ever think that one day there would be an opening showcasing your work in a Soho gallery? Do you see where I'm leading you? I thought this documentary was supposed to be cinema verite. It just point and shoot. I'm not supposed to even notice the camera, remember? You never said anything about doing interviews. This isn't CNN. Just one question. Fine. 
I told you, I'm terrified. I've got a lot riding on this. First, there's Ed Walters, who's invested in me, and and I'm I'm made this gallery are opening a reality. I'm grateful, but uh, if I tank, I don't know how I can repay him. I've waited a long time for this. Anyone who's anyone in the art world is going to be there tonight. For for me. I try to paint what I think the public wants. I want to be a success. I don't want to be a starving artist anymore. But my heart and, and my soul just hasn't been in this for a while now. This. It points to the painting in the corner. The painting is set on an easel and not visible to the audience. This is who I am. But never mind. I have to stick to the plan. I'm confident that what I'm putting out there is going to sell. Tonight. It will sell. It has to. I've come this far. Anyway, uh, tonight is about exposing myself and my work. How do I feel? Like the emperor when he, he realized he was buck naked. Is that good enough for you? Wow. I had no idea. You're not going to play Martin Scorsese all night long, are you? You'll never even notice me. I just need to capture all the excitement. Besides, my documentary is my work. Anyway, tonight is quite possibly the turning point in your career. Career? You call this a career? Of course. Think about how much time, not to mention money, that you have spent getting to this point. And now you've got a show? Your own show? Can't you see that you're on the brink of an amazing adventure? Some adventure. Indiana Jones, I ain't. I look more like a wannabe James Bond after one too many martinis. Shaken, not stirred. This isn't me. This is me. He picks up a pile of clothes, paint stained off the floor. Not anymore. Not after tonight, because tomorrow, everyone will know who Brad Blaze is. Well, everyone who reads the glowing review, you're sure to get in the paper. I pray you're right. You know what I had to do just to get this shit off the ground? All the schmoozing, all the soliciting, the back scratching, and all mainly just to please one critic. It's hard to admit how much I would die for a ray of review. Do you know how I've dreamed of that? <laughs> I, I wish you could write it. <laughs> Holly picks up the newspaper on the dresser, opens it up, and pretends to read. Brad Blaze has set the art world Ablaze, conjuring up visions and insights never before illustrated on canvas, making his mark as one of the most promising newcomers to modern art. The obvious next step for this bright new star is the Whitney Biennial. Sounds good, huh? Oh, oh, um, or how about Brad Blaze has blazed a new trail in modern art? <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. I'm sure the critics will say all sorts of amazing things about you. You mean the Times critic. He's all that really matters. If I don't get a positive review, I swear I'll call it quits. I've had enough of my daily grind of pleasing other people. <laughs> Do you think Van Gogh said I've had enough? Or Picasso? <laughs> I won't be cutting off my ear. Don't worry. I just keep going back to this portrait. Call it Muse. Named after you, of course. He walks to the corner and stands in front of the easel. It's completely unlike any of my other work. I, I feel good about it. But would the critics agree? I don't understand why you need someone else's stamp of approval. What you do is brilliant, all on its own. Listen, I've been in the documentary business for seven years now. Do you know how hard it is to get an NEA grant? 
What I'm saying is I wouldn't be wasting my time on this project if I didn't believe in you. And I believed in you before I fell in love and married you. Without you, I wouldn't be here tonight. I probably would have given up long ago. I'd be back in that garage fixing cars. <laughs> you're not a mechanic. You're an artiste. And I think your uncle knew that when he died and left you the garage. You're not married to a trade like he was, and he knew you would eventually sell the place. Brad looks at a few framed photos displayed around the loft. He picks up a photograph of himself and his uncle in front of the auto body shop. Uncle Marvin always believed in me. After my parents died, he made survival possible for me. He taught me to find strength in myself, raised me to be my own man. I was able to put, through, put myself through art school with that money. I wanted to make him proud. And now I want to make you proud. You know, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes. You're truly talented. <laughs> Thank you, Holly. He takes the video camera from her hands, leans over, and gives her a kiss. But is talent enough? Brad hands the camera back to Holly and turns to look back into the full-length mirror. The lights rise on Colin Barry's apartment. Colin is standing directly opposite Brad, facing the mirror in the apartment near the bar. Lights fade on Brad. Colin is adjusting the bow tie on his tuxedo as his wife, Tess, gracefully enters. Colin pours himself a drink. He turns as his wife enters. She is wearing a black designer dress. How do I look? Stunning, my dear. Didn't you wear that dress for the MoMA banquet? That was months ago. <laughs> she looks at her dress, second guessing her choice. It's perfect. You're perfect. He carries his drink and approaches her, kissing her gently on the cheek. What's this fellow's name again tonight? Uh, I don't remember. Sounds like the name someone conjured up. Brian Flame or something like that. What's the matter, Colin? You've been in a mood all day. You barely touched dinner and you've hardly said a word to me. I know. I, I'm just, uh, I've got a lot on my mind. I'm sorry, darling. I haven't said anything, but since you've now asked, there is something that I've been meaning to discuss with you. Okay. I don't want you to think that I've been hiding anything from you. I, I just had to think about it first, uh, with no outside opinions. Well, don't get me in suspense. I've been offered a job teaching art history at Columbia. Columbia? Teaching? <laughs> you, you can't possibly be considering this. Well, they want me for the fall semester. It's a great offer, Tess. Shaping young minds. Professor Colin Barry? It's absurd. You have to turn it down. You're Colin Barry, art critic. Famed art critic, I should add. That's who you are. You can't change that. You, you have a following. Let them follow someone else. I've had enough. I know I've said this before, but this time I really mean it. I've finally reached my breaking point. I'm so fed up with what's being called art today. I never thought I would live to see the day when a bloke duct tapes a banana to the wall and droves of people come to the gallery to view or even to buy his work of art. Done, Tess. I desperately need a change. And the classroom is just the ticket. I'm going to be a teacher. Done. Done because of a lousy banana? Think about it. That would be like, like asking Gordon Ramsay to stop cooking or Andrea Bocelli to stop singing. You live on the curve, on the cutting edge of art. You're a critic, plain and simple, and you're damn good at it. I don't care. This is it. Tonight is my last show. If I have to review one more artist, I use the word lightly, I'm going to go mad. Where's that invite for tonight? Holland picks up a brightly colored invitation on the coffee table, reading, Mr. Brad Blaze, 
I knew it had something to do with fire. Mr. Brad Blaze proudly invites you to the gala premiere showing of his work at the Soho Gallery, sponsored by financier Edward Walters III. Cocktails will be served. <laughs> Ed Walters. Wasn't he forced to retire to avoid some financial scandal? What does he know about up and coming artists? Or art, period, for that matter. He just has nothing better to do with his time or money than accept solicitations from every starving artist in New York City. He, he obviously sees something in this Brad Blaze. I doubt it. He's just a desperate old fool who can't say no to a convincing offer. And artists these days have more lines than a used car salesman. I mean, seriously, Tess, you don't think they get this far with their artistic ability, do you? Andy Warhol once said, Art is whatever you can get away with. At this point in my career, that quote speaks to me deeply. You're not being fair. And who knows, this guy may be the next Warhol. The next Warhol. <laughs> that was the last time I wrote a great review for a new artist. Well? Um. Uh. I can't recall, but... I can't either. But it's been at least two years, I'm sure. That's the problem. Just once. I want to go to an opening and... see something like this. This is art. This is brilliance. David Hockney's are few and far between, dear. But they don't have to be. All these newfangled artists are on an ego trip, whether they call it postmodernism or minimalism or graffiti street art. They don't paint because they have to, because it drives them, or because they simply can't exist without painting. They paint because it's hip. <laughs> They're nothing but pseudo artists creating pseudo art. Nowadays, if you are a guy with a can of spray paint, you're a creative contemporary artist. Yeah, and that's why they devote their entire life to a profession and less successful barely pays the rent. Uh, they survive, unfortunately. You are so jaded. At least give him a chance. Don't judge him before you've even seen his work. I wish I shared your eternal optimism. It's just that I'm so discouraged. Being an art critic used to make me hopeful. It was my dream job. You know, I come from humble, uh, from a humble background. I think about the years spent at school scraping the money to get my master's in art history, then finally a doctorate, all while paying my dues, working in countless galleries and museums, and for what? To make an impact on the art world. Certainly not the salary, which never seems to cover the luxuries we've grown accustomed to. Most men my age would be thinking about retirement. Retirement? I cannot believe what I am hearing. I'm not ready to be put out to pasture and I don't think you are either. Don't you love our life? The travel, the art openings, film premieres, private museum tours. For God's sakes, people would kill for your job. The art world hangs on your every word. Without you, people couldn't interpret, appreciate, or analyze art. They rely on your guidance. Guidance? I try gospel. My column has become to the art world what the Bible is to the Catholic Church. Now don't get carried away, your holiness. But fine, where else? Where else can you imagine such power? Nowhere. Even the goddamn president of the United States has his decision second guessed. No one second guesses me. When it comes to art, I am the art king. Oh, the art king. Ha! Huh. When did you get such a big head? Face the facts, Tess. I can make or break an artist's career. You know it, and they know it. They can be wildly successful or sent packing with one review from the king. Okay, okay, I'll give you some credit, but I mean, I'm not disputing your undeniable influence. 
I'm merely asking you to think about all of those artists that you have put on the map. Isn't that worth it? Isn't that worth it? Isn't that why you became a critic to begin with? To push art to new limits. Yes, but lately it seems like that map is pretty barren. Colin, just give this blaze a chance. Believe me, if the work is trash, I'll be the first to admit it. Colin downs the rest of his drink. Okay, let's table this conversation and get going. By my me, why postpone the inevitable? You'll see. But this discussion is not over. What I said before still stands, unless Brad Blaze is Matisse reincarnated, this will be my last column. Otherwise, Columbia has a new man. Tess and Colin exit arm in arm as the lights fade. Scene two. The scene opens in the Soho Gallery that evening. Brad's paintings are hung throughout the gallery. A large banner reads, Brad Blaze through an open window, premiere of an artist. The paintings are very moody with large swirls of gloppy paint. There are a dozen people milling about, holding cocktails and viewing neat work. As each person stands before a painting, we hear a medley of opinions. Interesting, provocative, daring. Brad and Ed enter. Holly precedes them, following their every move with her video camera. Looking good, my boy. Enjoy it while it lasts. This is your night. Thank you, sir. Did I tell you that I called the paper and asked if Colin Barry could come? You know Colin Barry, the critic. The editor of the paper is a good friend of mine, so I feel fairly certain that he'll show. He's a good man to know, don't you agree? Of course. The infamous Colin Barry. <sighs> I hate the thought that my entire destiny rests in his hands. I hope he likes what he sees. You have nothing to worry about. Your paintings speak for themselves. Anyway, in my book, you're headed for wealth and fame. And when you get there, you forget your old friend, Ed Walters. He looks right into Holly's camera. That's Edward Willard Walters III. Emma Holly Ed. turns the camera off. The camera. Don't talk to the camera. Just be natural. Natural? Natural is an adjective for a box of granola. It's impossible to be natural when someone's got a camera pointing at you. I think I'll begin the piece with some of tonight. A teaser, you know? Oh, you know, I'm glad I brought the wide-angle lens. It's got the right look. Good turn out, huh? Oh, for you. Please, don't remind me. Listen here. Greet everyone with smiles. They're potential customers, after all. I have confidence in you. And just think, if I hadn't stumbled onto you that day in the park, <laughs> Silly me. You know, I always laugh when I think about how I thought you were a doorman from my apartment building. There I was, babbling on and on about how you never know the secret lives doormen lead. We had quite a laugh over my mistake. But then I took... Oh, oh that painting! I remember the day we met. I was feeling frustrated with my work. I was literally throwing paint on the canvas as you wanted over to check it out. It became a big colorful, I don't know, energy burst? I loved your energy. And that painting? So intense, so inspired. I witnessed that cluster in you and your work. Why we may never be able to explain what great art is, we know it when we see it, right? The art you saw in the park was me letting my emotions run wild. You know, great art is often inspired by things that happen to you in your life and the people you meet. The painting Brad was working on that morning is over there. I call it Sunday in the Park with Ed. I saw it. I'm flattered. It'll sell for a bundle, I hope. As you know, I usually keep my involvement with the art world on a financial level. 
I write check and then leave it up to the experts. My old friend at the Harvard Club think I'm crazy, but if I can't spend my money on someone or something I believe in, then why have it at all? Besides, art, in my estimation, is very similar to the stock market, and I love a good investment. Ted pets Brad on the back. I think it was fate that you guys ran into each other that day. Yeah, yeah, fate. I believe it was luck. Pure luck. You charmed me in the park that day, and you'll charm New York tonight. Charm won't buy art supplies. A spotlight focuses on one of the couples observing a painting. It seems like they're having a difficult time trying to decipher what they are looking at. Um, this looks like a montage of storm clouds. Storm clouds? I see crashing waves. This must be what they call abstract expressionism. People are impressed. Don't you think? I've got some good reaction shots from earlier. Who can tell? I sure can't. Not a bad crowd. That's an excellent sign. Think you can muster up a smile? For all I know, they hate me. They're standing around thinking, what the hell? Who does this guy think he is? <laughs> They love you, trust me. And what they're saying is this guy's going somewhere and I want to be on board. Oh, geez. Oh, he came. There, there's Colin Barry. Enter Colin and Tess. Tess is all smiles and Colin heads directly to the bar. Tess orders a glass of Chardonnay. Colin takes a brief look around the gallery and asks the bartender to pour him a double. Should we greet him properly? Wait until I get a good angle. No, no, not yet. Please put the camera down. He made a beeline for the bar. Don't look at him. Wait, wait, is he looking this way? Can you both please just act natural? Just, just act like we didn't notice him coming in. Brad turns his back. I'm getting this shot whether you're in it or not. Is he walking away? He doesn't know I'm the artist. Except you're the one sweating profusely. No, he's not coming this way. He and his wife are taking a walk around the gallery. He's checking out the crowd. The crowd? But what about the painting? Is he looking at the paintings? Nice. He's looking at Sunday in the Park with Ed. I shouldn't have used so much green with that one. I should have stuck with the golds and the blues. I can't look. Holly, what's he doing? He's handing his glass to his wife. He's taking out a pen and paper. Who does that anymore? He's, look, he's looking at his wife. Oh God, I love her dress. She's so beautiful in person. I've seen her TV show and it's not bad for a daytime talk show. Brad, to your sponsor, I should greet Mr. Barry. Ed, give him another minute. He's taking notes. Those words are my future. The spotlight dims on the group and rises on another couple standing before a painting, perplexed. It looks kind of like, like a tornado. Do you see that? I don't know. To me, it looks like a jungle at night. He calls it aura. Of course, that's perfect. For the record, I haven't said a word yet. Before I do, I want to hear your opinion. I knew you'd put me on the spot. Okay, I threw in the towel. You're right, they're horrendous. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but this guy is worse than even I imagined. But you never knew, you never know. He could have been a real find. But he's not. It's like, that movie Groundhog Day, the same day over and over again. Here I am again, another bad artist. More people standing around unsure of what to say or how to react. They have no inkling of what to make of the art. They blindly wander, making whatever comment seems appropriate at the moment. Then the subject is turned over to page six gossip. 
no, no, no. I disagree. If I can tell this is a bunch of crap, so can they. Come on, Tess. Look around. They're clueless. Not until they read my column will they be enlightened to call this work what it is. Atrocious. I think you're selling this crowd short. This is a cultured bunch. They can tell. <laughs> We're talking about contemporary art here. I can't tell. Believe me. <laughs> Look at this painting. What is it? It's an eyesore. Where are the lines, the, the symmetry, the, the strokes? I don't think he even used a brush to paint this one. All right, I mean, I know there are no rules, but still, what's he trying to say? I don't have any clue. I've seen finger painting by four-year-olds better than this. And the paintings are all the same. So the colors are a little different on each, but it's basically the same painting 10 times over. Hey, when you've got the style down, go for it. What a waste of perfectly good canvas. I cannot imagine why anyone would pay good money for a painting like this. It's art, honey, didn't you know? It's not about beauty or emotions. Or, it's all about who can be more shocking, more bizarre, more nonsensical. <laughs> That's why I want out. Someone could put shit on a plate and call it art. <laughs> and... If it got a good review from yours truly, people would eat it up. Lovely thought, Colin. You're dreaming. I've never been more awake. Whatever I write is gospel, remember? This crowd can't tell the difference between good art and rubbish. So they keep quiet for fear of flaunting their ignorance. Simpler to take Colin Barry's word for it. No, no, no. I Someone's going to figure this out and stand up and say, this is worthless. I wouldn't put money on it. No, well, I would. Hmm. Now you're talking. What is that look in your eye? I have a proposition for you. One you can't refuse. I'm listening. Let's say that I give this Blaze character, a stunning review, next to Andy Warhol or something. I bet you that he'd sell every one of these paintings and at a high price, I might add. Huh. What kind of stakes are we talking about here, darling? If I'm right, and he's an overnight sensation, you must invite him to be a guest on your talk show to celebrate his newfound talent to rave about his inspiring contribution to modern art and to welcome him into the select circle of accepted new artists. And I take the teaching job at Columbia. Uh, seriously? You bet. Okay, what if you're wrong and people, regardless of the brilliant review you'll write, have no desire to devour his work as you imagine. That won't happen. But if it does, and now I'm setting the rules, you must buy one of these masterpieces, <laughs> like this one, embrace, and hang it prominently in your office at the paper, and give up this ridiculous notion of be becoming a professor. It's good. You've got a bet. Shall we shake on it? I'd rather seal it with a kiss. Come here, darling. He holds Tess in an embrace and kisses her, still smiling. The lights rise on Brad, Holly, and Ed Walters. I think your work is a hit. Look at him smiling and kissing his wife. Looks like a good sign to me. I'm sensing a rave review in your future. He does look awfully pleased. And he's been standing before Embrace for quite a while now. Uh, maybe my luck is changing.